Right, let me try something new. Let me just say, please don't go anywhere. And I say that because I've created an inflammatory thumbnail. And I do have a very strong point to make about this printer that it seems has been mostly lost on the market. And I had to do something to get your attention because from what I've seen, the opinions about this printer have been loud and clear. Yeah, the concept is cool. It's nice that Bamboo have released a new style of printer, but the build area is just too small. But the thing is, and this is especially true if you're already a 3D printing enthusiast, this probably isn't the printer for you. But I do need your help to reach the people who this 3D printer is actually for. So hi, I'm Ross and this is Fohammer Videos. So look, when it comes to printers nowadays, there are tons of new people jumping on board. And those of us who've been here for a while will be offering advice on what to get. And I can see why people will start with the cheaper printers. Most commonly, it's something like an Elegoo Neptune or the Anycubic Cobras. And in both of those cases, you get a larger print volume. Here, with the A1 Mini, you only get 180mm cubed as a space in order to make your creations. And relatively, that is quite small, I agree. And it is the main reason that people do turn their nose up at this product or don't recommend it to others as a place to start. But honestly, for a 3D printing beginner whose main interest is in the printing of cool things rather than the coding and robotics of a printer itself, I beg you to encourage them to start here. Because yeah, where this lacks in build area, do you know where it beats the other printers? Everywhere else. And I think the mistake Bamboo have made so far is whenever you look at this printer on the website, you see it at a crazy high price because it defaults to the combo which includes the AMS Lite. But for just the printer alone, click the A1 mini button and you'll see that it's nearly half the price. And speaking of money, this is not a sponsored video. I bought this printer. I wasn't sent it free from Bamboo. Not that this matters much. I'd give you my honest opinion either way. But I wanted you to know that I made the investment here just so I can share my opinion on it because I do think that we're missing a trick. So yeah, stick with me. Let me walk you through it and point out everything that Bamboo does here that makes this the ultimate beginner printer. And also the yardstick that every other beginner printer should be measured against. At the very least, I hope it gets the other brand's attention because their goal should now be to exceed this and not just match it, which they're all failing to do. Now the beginner thing starts literally as you open the box. There's a QR code right there which leads you to a video setup guide. And this is essentially unbox all the bits, remove a retaining clip from the Z-arm, unclip some cable ties and remove all the foam. And unlike pretty much every other bed slinger I've ever used, now bed slingers are 3D printers where the print bed moves back and forth, unlike any other bed slinger, this is the first one I haven't had to build myself. There's a couple of bits you need to do, but it's, it's minor. By the time you follow the video guide on your phone and turn the printer on, the UI then walks you through every single next step. And once you have it connected to your Wi-Fi, it then has you download the Bamboo Handy app on your phone and connects it up to your Bamboo account. And whilst you're looking at this app and browsing around and checking out all the files available, your printer continues its out-of-box calibration by measuring the noise on each axis, the vibration frequency to avoid wobbles in your prints, and automatically levels the bed. By the time this is done and you're familiar with the app on your phone, you probably want to print something and normally you'll get a USB drive to plug into your PC with a benchy on it and if you're lucky, maybe one more test. But here, there is an SD card chock full of fun toys to print and I'm talking flying saucers with a handle and a pulley, a pan flute, a cube puzzle, some NASA fabric or some weird springy hedgehog thing that bounces up and down for absolutely no reason. But it was after I spent a couple of days printing these things that I realized I was having more fun with this printer from just the files that come with it than with any other printer before with the whole internet of files available to me. And it's this journey that Bamboo leads you through which made me realize why this is the perfect beginner printer. I hadn't actually even touched my PC or any of the settings yet. I hadn't even connected it up to the Bamboo Lab Slicer. And the thing is, I spend so much of my time in reviews considering what I should print. What's cool? What am I interested in right now? What would get your attention? But with this thing, I was 10 or more prints into it before I realized, oh crap, I'm already just having so much fun. And this is what we need nowadays in order to onboard more people. 
And it's this experience where Bamboo have absolutely nailed the beginner approach. It's like in modern video games, you have a short intro and then seamlessly transition into the gameplay as the actual story begins to open up. That's what this printer does. Just for example, look at any of the Batman Arkham games, because I think most of you will have played them or at least be aware of them. Accept Origins, ignore Origins. And that's what they do. They have you playing before you lose interest. In fact, they have you playing before you even realize the game had started. Then look at Gotham Knights, because that's an equivalent-ish game. That's got a 15 minute opening cutscene, and that game lost my interest before it even had it. And it's the same with 3D printers. Who wants to buy a product and then, here you go, go and watch these 10 YouTube videos, each of them half an hour long each, before you even click a button on the actual printer itself? You literally have to go and educate yourself and learn how not to break it before you even get started with most printers. But now, after the A1 Mini, this is exactly what I'm going to expect from all printers going forward. And why shouldn't I? If Bamboo have made it this easy for someone to get started 3D printing, why should I not do everything I can to celebrate, promote, and encourage that? Because going forward, I'll always know that this can be done so much better from other brands. And honestly, listen to how excited I am already, and all we've talked about is unboxing it and the first few prints. So yeah, look, the printer's got other features too, like a built-in camera, which you can use to detect issues on the first print layers and create a time-lapse of every print you make. You can also monitor it remotely too. But I will admit, at the moment, this printer's not perfect, but the flaws are nothing that can't be fixed with a few software tweaks, and Bamboo are currying a ton of favour in that regard thanks to the continued long-term support of their previous models. Now to disclose everything, the random issues I've had are where the camera won't open up on the app sometimes, where I can't download time lapses remotely through the PC application Bamboo Studio. Sometimes, for no apparent reason, the print would fail and I'd be left with string, but the AI camera, or at least I believe it's an AI camera, doesn't detect this and it just keeps printing anyway. Now, in retrospect, I can't actually see that the printer offered this function according to the website, but since it's got a camera, I just kind of assumed it would. And for some odd reason, the other issue I had, occasionally, meaning like three times in total, it would start a print a little bit higher from the bed than it needed to, and so my first layer wouldn't adhere. But simply restarting the print resolved this every single time. And again, those really are no more than minor quirks, bugs if you will, and unlike many other brands, uh, okay, honestly, unlike every other brand, Bamboo has my trust that these will disappear before long. But even with those, every single part of using this machine has been a pleasant experience. Even the print start sound just resonates that joy is happening. I'm married and most of these big toys I play with annoy my wife because they take up space in the house. But this one got her attention with that sound alone. And yes, it's a small thing, but a small thing that releases endorphins every time it chimes. Now, I didn't want to talk too techy in this video because I did really want to speak to those of you who aren't 3D printer users already. But for those of you who are interested in this, there are a couple of things you should know about. Firstly, the nozzle. It's pretty much hot swappable, or more importantly, it's cold swappable. You literally just unlatch it and swap it out. Forget all the TikToks you've seen with pretty vistas. For a 3D printer user, this is heaven. Another feature is the active flow rate compensation, kind of similar to the pressure advance feature on the X1 Carbon, which uses LiDAR to calibrate extrusion compensation. This also optimizes prints for a smoother flow rate and avoids bloated corners or errant stringy wisps between gaps. And all that's just about the printer, I still haven't talked about the AMS light, which I have intentionally left until this point. So like I said, I think the printer's marketed wrong and they really should sell this printer on its own and then upsell the AMS Lite with that as an option to buy them together as a bundle. And this AMS Lite basically lets you use multiple filaments or multiple colors in a single print. I've had AMS units for a while with my X1 Carbon, so seeing a unit like this come out on what is essentially an entry-level printer is absolutely great. And whilst yes, this is a standout feature of the Bamboo range, like I've said a couple of times now, I think having this bundle front and center when you view the A1 Mini's page is putting people off the unit as a whole. 
This printer works just fine without the AMS, and I'm sure it's something you'll be able to add on later. But seeing something at $300 for an amazing starter printer is just much easier to swallow than $460. And maybe it's the plan to push it that way when the AMS light goes on sale generally, but right now, at the time of recording, there is no way to buy the AMS light solo. But it will come, I'm sure. Where this AMS really does shine though is that they've learned since the X1 and this new A1 hot end uses much less waste than the X1 when changing colours, though the method of dealing with that waste is just flinging it off the side of the printer, and as of yet I'm still to find a good and consistent filament capture. Now it does have some other issues too I find irritating, personally I think the included PTFE tubes are far too short and at times when the hot end moves across the X axis it does actually tug at the AMS slightly. Just an extra inch or two would have sorted this but isn't that always the case. And like the normal AMS units, some reels of third party filament just won't work with this machine, but in this case it's more of them that won't work. In the larger AMS units, the cardboard reels can get worn through, and larger reels can get stuck on the casing, which means they just don't fit. But with this one, unless the center ring is an exact diameter, they will just fall off. Though I do expect before long, if not already, there will be some 3D printable adapters that you can get hold of. But hey, look, it works, and it's easy. So much so that when I had my hands full one day, I asked my wife to change the spool for me and she figured it out within minutes. Now I'm not saying she's stupid, I'm just trying to give an example of how simple this is for someone who is a bit more tech averse than the average 3D printer enthusiast. Because honestly, that's who this printer is aimed at. Instead of just being something with a few new features that coax people off the fence, this printer reaches over the fence and aims to get the attention of everyone who hasn't even considered it yet. But the best feature of this machine or this bundle, I've left until last. And this is something that on the website they say will only come with the printer while stocks last. And that's the inclusion of one of four random hardware kits. And honestly, in my opinion, they need to keep these included indefinitely because I got the mouse kit randomly with my A1 Mini and I actually bought the engine kit and the marble run kit separately and I would have got the LED lamp kit, but it was out of stock. And these give you all the screws and electronics gubbins and by simply scanning the QR code on the box for these, the phone app loads up the model along with several user variations of it and you can just send these straight to your printer from the app and start printing. So not only has this printer walked you through the process of getting it out the box to your first exciting and interesting prints, but now you've made functional parts with it too. And by getting people to that point, that's how they get bitten by the 3D printing bug and tell more people about it. Now for me, in part of my life, I'm a 3D printer enthusiast, I run a YouTube channel. But in another, bigger part of my life, I'm a family man, and I've been looking for ages for some kind of STEM subscription box for my kids. And here, with these four kits available, I can just print one. And I did just that. I printed a mouse for my daughter, I printed an engine for my son. And for a whole evening, we sat together and built these workable items. We learned and we had fun, and we did it as a family. And that's the bit that worries me because Bamboo have said on their website these are available while stocks last, and if that's the case then they're missing a massive opportunity to work with some creators and have more kits available like this soon. I mean, maybe even each month or each week. If they did that then we could all sit down and build something fun, new, creative and exciting with our families. And yes, there's a ton of stuff out there, but you know what I don't have time to do and I'm sure many people can relate to this in the modern day. I don't have time to go searching for all the right nuts, bolts, tools and different electronics that I need in order to make these models work. I barely have time to go searching for interesting models themselves amongst the deluge of options available. And why not? Well, for me, it's because I'm busy reviewing 3D printers for you lot. In your case, it's probably work or some other hobbies or other commitments you've got in your life. We, we just don't have time, but we do want to make cool things with our cool toys. So yeah, there are people out there who still believe that all 3D printer users should go through a rite of passage with painful 3D printing trial and error ahead of them. But those people, or you people if it's you, and you've got that level of interest in printing, you can still have your toys because they're expanding their features too. And maybe it's because you enjoyed the robotic side or the programming side. That's cool, enjoy it, I'm not trying to stop you. 
but surely you've still got the respect for the engineering that Bamboo Lab have performed here in order to design out as many hurdles as possible because now we finally have a product and an approach that is suitable to the masses. And this is a 3D printer for the whole family. Maybe you still disagree, but hey, look, progress is such that when something is cool, more people want to get the benefit from it, but not everyone has the luxury or time to dedicate to building their own version of Johnny 5. And I do get the upset as well, I do get it. It's always sad when indie goes pop, especially when it's something that you love and you've spent so much time on. But please try and remember, at one point we were all running around with Nokia 3310s and N95s until a bloke called Steve thought to himself, you know what, what if we made these but, you know, not sh**? And by supporting Bamboo's approach, it means we all collectively encourage more brands to operate this way in future. And that'll accelerate the advancement of this technology for everyone. But yes, if I'm honest, I also wish that Bamboo had made a bigger A1 and an X1 or P1 with at least 300mm cube bill volume while I'm wishing for stuff. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to all of our members who are up on screen now. Please consider joining them and supporting our content by becoming a member. If you do like this video, then please click the like button. That's the whole point of, you know, you like it, you do that. That really helps me and it helps this video get out to more people. And ideally, if you can, leave a comment too because that will fuel the algorithm. Until next time, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Fohammer out.